<laughs> Good morning. I guess you're wondering what in the world is going on. Uh, happy Resurrection Sunday, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's broadcast. I have uh, so much joy and excitement within my heart today. Uh, and I want to share that with you. And hopefully everyone out there is having a, uh, a blessed uh, Sunday. Uh, this Resurrection Sunday 2020. Uh, there's so much going on in the world today, and um, I just want to encourage your heart this morning, you know, regarding uh, today uh, and how special it is uh, to our hearts. Uh, but, but, but before we get into the Word of God, I just want to uh, let you know that anything that you're dealing with, anything that you're having a challenge with, any problem, any situation, any, 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 anything, uh, God is able to... Uh, uh, provide the answer for you. And there's so many things that's happening today uh, in today's society uh, to where we do need answers, especially with this current quarantine that we're under. And hopefully, you know, as time progress, things will continue to get better. That is what we're praying for. Uh, at least that is what I'm praying for. And hopefully you are too. Uh, but let's get into the word of God today, because uh, it, it, there's an inspiring message that I want to touch bases on and uh, right now, this particular broadcast is not inside of our ministry church. Uh, it's actually inside of my home for the ones that are uh, new to this channel. That is where uh, we're being broadcasted, uh, where I am broadcasting from today. And there's one thing about this particular channel. Not only is it about athletes and or superb student leaders and uh, outstanding colleges and universities and uh, uh, HBCU battle of the bands and dancers and all these different type of things. That's all good in itself. Uh, but the ultimate goal uh, also of this uh, channel is to help inspire your hearts, uh, to help you rise up to the level and uh, to continue in excellence uh, wherever you're living and in your neck of the woods. And that's what this particular uh, channel uh, also is about. It's about inspiration, motivation, education and all those different type things but today i want to inspire your heart regarding a message uh, this resurrection sunday or easter sunday uh, that i want to share with you uh, today but uh, let's get into the word of god now when it concerns uh, this particular sunday uh, i want to read to you mark chapter 16 and when the Sabbath was, pa was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of, G of James and Salome or Salome uh, had bought uh, sweet spices that they might come and anoint him and anoint who anoint Jesus Christ because he has just he was just crucified. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher uh, at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher of the sepulcher? And when they looked and saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And they were affrighted, meaning they were afraid. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples, his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said to you. And they went quickly, they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled, trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared unto, first unto Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she sent and told them that had been with him as they mourn and wept. So they were, they were crying. They were having a difficult time uh, that Jesus was crucified. They could not believe it. And they were very, very despondent. The disciples, that is. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. 
We talk about Doubting Thomas. Well, this particular crew that day, uh, these disciples, they did not believe uh, what uh, Mary Magdalene was uh, sharing, what they were sharing with him. After that, he had appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked into the, as they went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he had risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if, any, if, if, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Praise God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. And that is Mark chapter 16, the first verse to the last verse. Now, this is a very powerful uh, scripture uh, and Bible uh, truth uh, that had occurred uh, when Jesus was crucified, um, the word got out uh, through Mary Magdalene. And, you know, one thing about the message of Jesus Christ is that it's real. And many people out there don't believe that, but there's only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. And that may be tight, uh, but it's right. Uh, but it's right in love, because that is what God has for you. God has love for you. For God gave his only begotten son for us, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross for our sins. And that is why we're enjoying this Resurrection Sunday. But many people out there are not enjoying uh, uh, Sunday because they have lost a loved one due to this particular uh, plague that is uh, 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 that we call dead and done in Jesus name, the plague that is. But they're not having a, a wonderful Sunday. They just lost a loved one. Uh, they're in mourning. They're grieving. And we do pray for the ones out there. We do not take it lightly. Our hearts are with you. Um, when it concerns uh, that particular situation, because I personally know uh, what it's like to lose a loved one uh, that is close and dear to the heart. And we are praying for you. We are praying for strength for you, your family, and everyone out there that's having uh, a challenging time this day. Uh, for many people, they're smiling. For many people, they're having you know, fun with their children. But for others, they're not doing such. They're, they're mourning uh, with their family. They're mourning. Uh, with their children. They're, uh, you know, having a challenging time in the heart because Satan has come in and attacked their family. Uh, but we believe in God. Uh, we believe in God's strength. We believe in uh, Psalm 91 protection, continued protection over you and your family. Uh, we believe in that no weapon that is formed against you or your family shall prosper according to God's living word. Uh, for God's word is alive, is quick, is powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and it is, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God's word, he know, God knows our heart. And when the word is abiding on the inside, he helps us uh, through those challenging times. He helps us to pray for individuals out there that are having challenging times. And that is what God desires in this earth, for us to take dominion and to have dominion and subdue this earth. Speak those things uh, to be not. Call those things to be not as though they were. We need to speak uh, for this is a word activated system. And if you're having some type of challenge physically in your body today, uh, you know, any type of challenge in your family, any type of challenge personally, uh, you know, you speak the word of God. And, in, and to have the most significant impact when you speak it, speak the word of God in 
faith because life goes on, whether you believe it or not, it continues. You know, and we want to continue walking in victory. We want to continue walking in success. Uh, we want to continue uh, to have a victorious life. We desire to have a victorious life. At least I do. You know, I can speak for myself. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord by the grace of God. And we desire victory in everything that you do, everything that we do. Uh, you should desire victory, I should say, in everything that you do. Uh, and we desire victory also as well on, in our neck of the woods uh, in everything uh, that we do. But Mark chapter 11 speaks about something that is very powerful. You know, Jesus Christ, he died on Calvary's cross for the remission of sins for the whole world. So it doesn't matter if you're a drug dealer, if you're a prostitute, if you're a skinhead, if you are a wife beater, if you are a murderer. It doesn't matter any type of heinous sin, the most unthinkable thing that you can think of. Jesus Christ died for you, whether you're in prison or whether you're free. Jesus Christ died for you. Now, to receive that, what he has, uh, has died for, meaning died for your sins, receive him in your heart. And when you receive him in your heart, he forgives you of all of that prostitution, uh, drug dealing, murdering, killing, stealing, and all those different type things that, you know, we can uh, have in our backstory or currently uh, walking in now. Uh, Jesus Christ, he loves you. God loves you. We love you. And that is why I'm so thankful that Jesus is Lord. And when you give those sins over to him, he, he will receive your sins. He will receive your sins and forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, one thing about Christianity is that uh, don't believe that when you become a Christian now that all your problems go away. Your problems don't go away, people. But the thing is, here is the key. God helps you to get victory through the precious blood of Jesus Christ and what he has done on the cross through those problems that or those challenges that come your way. We need Christ in this life. We need in order to have victory. We must have Christ. We must have the inner working of the Holy Spirit uh, that is still here in the earth today. Uh, when Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, uh, you know, after this particular crucifixion, uh, on the cross, uh, the Holy Spirit descended here in the earth and is here today, 2020, uh, willing to lead and to guide and to order your steps uh, in the way that you should go. So there's so much that's power packed in this particular verse. And I'm going to read a few more scriptures here uh, before bringing this particular message to a close. Now, in verse 15 of Mark chapter 16, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus is saying he's giving a command. And whenever you see words in red, that means that we win because Jesus is speaking this and the words in black as well. But uh, but the words we're emphasizing here, I'm emphasizing here is Jesus speaking Jesus actual words. And it was said earlier in this particular broadcast that this is a word activated system. Words are spiritual containers. If you desire for your life to change, you must speak words. It doesn't matter what language it is. It, it can be Chinese. It can be the beautiful language of, uh, of Russian. It can be Hebrew. It can be any type of language. This is a word activated system and God. He understands all languages because he created all languages. So when you speak in Chinese, God understands. When you speak in Hebrew, God understands. When you speak in Spanish, God understands. When you speak in Italian, God understands. So the thing is, begin to speak, but watch it now. Be careful. Be cautious about this simple fact. When Jesus was hanging on that cross, on Calvary's cross, Dying for the remission of the whole world's sins, everybody's sins, every ethnic group, every nationality, every language, every person. 
during that time, past, present, future, today, and even into the future. He was careful about what he said on that cross. One of the most powerful things, the most powerful thing that is, excuse me, the most powerful thing that he said on that cross is, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And in your hands, I commend my spirit. Hallelujah. And that is when Jesus Christ gave up the ghost and he hit the pit of hell. And when he hit the pit of hell, he took those keys from Satan and was risen. God resurrected Jesus Christ, his son, his only begotten son. He resurrected him and seated him at his right hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you be careful about what you say. And this is the point that I want to get to. Watch your words. What are you saying out of your mouth? Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? Are you allowing life to penetrate your life and your family and your home? Or are you speaking death? And what, I, what do I mean by that? I'm about to starve to death. That is uh, uh, destruction words. Those are destruction words. You know, if anyone has a sickness, I'll be the first one to catch it. You know, that's a, more destructive words. You're setting yourself up for sickness, disease, weakness, pain that Jesus Christ died for, but yet you try to apply it to your life. And when you speak words like that, it, it, it applies to your life. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And they that live by it, meaning the words, live by the words that you say, shall eat the fruit thereof. It's spring. Things are beginning to bloom. Uh, fruits are, no matter what's going on in the world today, uh, the, the nature is, pres is progressing, is moving on. Uh, uh, the fruits are beginning to bud and, you know, all these different type of things. And why? Because of the spoken word of God. So you must watch your words because we're made out of three parts. No, we're not made out of three parts, but we're created. And when God created us, we have a spirit, a soul, and a body. And we have to watch our words when it concerns speaking them out of our mouths because you will have what you say. The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. Whenever you're not having the mind of Christ, you speak negative words, you speak words of destruction. So speak words of life. Speak words of life and words of life is, Jesus, I believe that you are Lord and Savior, you died for all of my sins. Come into my life, come into my heart, and do something with my life. And Jesus will immediately come in and save you from your sins. So, as we're uh, enjoying this particular or living through this particular resurrection day, thank God for Jesus Christ because He is giving us the words and giving us the command to go ye into all the earth. As it says here in the word of God and the word of God tells us that he says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach it to every creature. Preach it. God created everything. Preach it to your dog. Preach it to the birds. Preach it to the people. If people won't listen, listen, preach it to the rocks so the rocks can cry out <laughs> to God because he is worthy of all praise. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from separation, eternal separation from God. See, in this life, if you don't get it right on this side, meaning if you do not accept Jesus Christ as Lord and it's his love so God can love on you and give you his uh, very best. When you when your spirit leaves your body, you will be totally separated from God for eternity. And you don't want that. I don't want that. We don't want that. So that is why when it talks about uh, being saved and there's so much more uh, in that particular uh, verse. Uh, but whenever you are connected to God, you're connected to life. And who doesn't want to live? Every single day we wake up, we, uh, you do, many of you out there, you thank God for life, health, and strength. 
many people out there, they don't care. They just wake up and just live and they don't believe in God. They don't, you know, all these different type things. And we do pray for them. You know, we're not uh, bashing anyone. We're not the judge of anyone uh, because God, he knows how to speak to people's hearts uh, and get their attention, you know, to where they give their life uh, unto him. He doesn't force anybody. I want to put that out there now. Don't, don't think just because I said that mean that God forces himself. He encroaches upon your will and make you do things because he does not do that. God is a perfect uh, gentleman, uh, but he does, you know, love us and he nudges us, you know, and I thank God for, you know, getting my attention uh, to give my life over to him uh, because my life was, was never the same after that day I gave and committed my life to Christ. Uh, but uh, that individual, whenever you believe and it is baptized, meaning submersed in water, the water does not save you, but it is, is a symbolism of being resurrected with Christ. Uh, that's all that is. So whenever you hear about baptism, you know, going under the water, being sprinkled or, you know, whatever the method is. You know, it's not the water that saves, it's the blood of Jesus Christ, it's, God, it's Jesus that died on the cross by sharing his precious blood on that cross for you to be saved. But that's just a symbolism of being buried and resurrected uh, with Jesus Christ. But it goes on to say in verse 16, but he that believeth shall not be damned. And, you know, you hear people talk about and they say sometimes out of their mouth, uh, respectively, uh, with me, you know, voicing this to you, well, I'll be damned. Why in the world do you want to be damned? You know, that's not anything good to say. You know, you want life. You know, that's what you want. You want life and you want life everlasting. You don't want to be damned. You know, this, that's, that's the negative word. And there's that word again, speaking wrong words out of the mouth. And you want to speak life words. Life words win. Okay. Uh, but it goes on to say, verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, that should, they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. I don't know if you ever had, a, uh, you know, um, living in life and seen um, uh, demonic activity. I have. And, you know, it's nothing, uh, you know, to uh, to fear because uh, demons are real. Satan is real. Uh, if you don't believe that, that doesn't mean it's true. Uh, but the Bible says, the word of God said, there's a real devil and there are real demons. And in Christ Jesus, we have victory over the flesh, the world, and the devil. For it is written, you know, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, that is what, you know, he had, uh, had to use. He had to use the word of God. And whenever he used the word of God, that's when Satan uh, took flight. Uh, but, you know, we have the authority in Christ to use his word to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. Uh, and they should speak with new tongues, meaning utterance. You know, you may not understand what you're saying, but it is a it is a, a language that you're speaking uh, in a new tongue unto God. And that's your spirit speaking. And that is what that is saying here. Uh, they should take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Praise God. Well, I'm not going to draw this message out uh, long, uh, but I just want to encourage your heart today to keep your hand in the hand of the Master, uh, and that is Jesus Christ. Um, you know, God, He loves you. He wants the very best for you. And uh, my prayer for you this day is that you continue to live long, healthy, and strong, and continue to trust God. Why? Because Jesus is Lord.